Good morning. Um, today we're going to talk a little bit about sonnets, um, especially thinking about what you need to know whenever you're analyzing a sonnet. We read one sonnet together um, on Tuesday of last week. That was Sonnet 61 by Shakespeare. Um, today we're going to read another sonnet, it's Sonnet 30 also by Shakespeare. So there's a few things that you need to know. The first is that sonnets always, always, always have 14 lines. Okay? The second is that sonnets are always just one stanza. A stanza is a group of lines within a poem where there is no line break. Um, so there's only just one stanza and that consists of 14 lines. Um, also important to know is that there are varying types of sonnets and that depends on rhyme scheme. Um, there are Italian sonnets. There are also Shakespearean sonnets. Obviously, we're looking at two sonnets by Shakespeare, so those will both be Shakespearean sonnets. Let's take a look at what we studied last week together. So this is sonnet 61. Should look familiar. Um, the first thing we want to make sure is that this is a true sonnet. So we want to analyze how many lines it has. So counting, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. So we do have fourteen lines. So it is a true stanza or a true sonnet. I mean, um, we also just have one stanza because I see that this is a group of lines. There is no line break, so this is just one stanza. Okay. Um, the next thing we want to analyze is thinking about rhyme scheme. So Shakespeare always used the same rhyme scheme whenever he was writing sonnets. Um, and we, when we're analyzing rhyme scheme, we are looking for lines that have rhymes at the end that pair with other lines or connect. So starting off, it says, is it thy will thy image should keep open? So this is our first ending of line one. My heavy eyelids to the weary night. Open and night do not rhyme. So we're going to keep moving and looking for any connections to the word open or the word night. Dost thou desire my slumbers should be broken? So this is a rhyme with the word open. It's not a perfect rhyme, but there is the same ending. So we're gonna put A next to it and keep moving. While shadows like to thee do mock my sight. So this is a connection to the word night. These are rhymes, so we're gonna put Bs because they connect in their rhymes. All right, let's keep going. Is it thy spirit that thou sendest from thee? The word thee does not rhyme with open, night, broken, or sight, so we're gonna add a new letter, the letter C. So far from home into my deeds to pry. It's another new rhyme, so let's go ahead and add D here. To find out shames and idle hours in me. So me, rhymes with V, so we're gonna connect it with the letter C here. The scope and tenor of thy jealousy. This one's hard, when we say the word jealousy out loud, ooh, that's a terrible line. When we say the word jealousy out loud, it sounds like it rhymes with thee and me, but we notice that at the end here, there's a Y, and that actually connects to the word pry here. So we're gonna put a D. Um, I know that we might have made a mistake and put a C, um, but we also know that Shakespeare follows the same rhyme scheme for almost all of his sonnets. So it's going A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, alternating rhyme schemes throughout. So we can make that connection there. All right, let's keep going. Oh no, thy love, though much, is not so great. We have a new rhyme. It is my love that keeps mine eye awake. Mine own true love that doth my rest defeat. This is another tricky one. So this is not a perfect rhyme. Um, however, looking back at the word great, we see that there's the same line endings here, E-A-T. So we're gonna make that connection. Um, when there are two words that kind of rhyme, but not quite, that's called slant rhyme. So this is an example of slant rhyme. Words that almost rhyme but not quite. Shakespeare liked to do that a lot. All right, let's keep going. Uh, line 12, to play the watchman ever for thy sake. That is a rhyme. It rhymes with our word awake up here, so we're going to put an F. All right, what I'm noticing is I have two lines left, line 13 and 14, and I'm noticing that they're indented here, 
So it's not exactly aligned with the rest of the poem. So I'm thinking that's probably going to be pretty important. So let's see. For thee watch I, whilst thou dost wake elsewhere. This doesn't seem to rhyme with anything else. So I'm going to put a G. From me far off with others all too near. That's another slant rhyme, but it's close enough that we're going to put a G here. Okay. So there's a few things happening here. The first one is, as I said, you're noticing that there are alternating rhymes as we go through, and those alternating rhymes are in groups of four. Okay? When we have four lines that have alternating rhymes, A, B, A, B, that is called a quatrain. So Shakespeare has split this poem into three quatrains. So let's make sure that we are analyzing that here. Quatrains groups of four lines that alternate rhyme. Excellent. So then that leaves us with our two lines at the end, right, which we said are probably going to be important because we noticed the indent. And if I mark this here, I'm noticing that they rhyme. So it's two lines that rhyme back to back. That is called a couplet, a rhyming couplet. So there's two rhyming lines right here. Shakespeare used this rhyming couplet in all of his sonnets as a way to shift or create what's called a volta or a turn, okay? Um, volta equals turn. It's an emotional shift in a sonnet, okay? So thinking about this poem, we know this poem is about jealousy, right? Reading through, we saw a lot of images of the speaker having his eyes left open at night. He is thinking about his love. He is questioning his love, wondering if she's doing this to him on purpose, right? Why is he feeling so jealous? And we as readers are asking, why is he so obsessed with this person? Why is he feeling so much jealousy, so much worry about what this person is doing? So then the turn happens at the end at this rhyming couplet. For thee watch I, whilst thou dost wake elsewhere from me far off, while others all too near. We learn here at the end that the reason the speaker is so jealous is because his love is too far away from him and has other people nearby, and he's worried about it. He's, he's separated from her. Okay? So we have this emotional um, sort of shift that occurs, and we learn more about what the main point of this poem is, okay? and what the, the author is really trying to say about jealousy. Right? Um, hopefully this is helpful. Please use this information as you study Sonnet 30 today. If you have any questions, please feel free to get um, in touch with me or Ms. Chavez and we can figure it out together.